Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called The Human God, written by Captain Candy. Welcome, Mr. President. I am glad you agreed to this meeting on such short notice. Most species we contact take months, if not years, to calm down enough to actually talk. I hope we didn't cause you all too much trouble. I know some races even go into a state of global war when we first show up. The meeting was no trouble at all, and you did cause quite a stir, I'll say that much. There is a war being started right now, but not to worry. A few whispers in the right ears and a few false promises. Now Russia and China are slugging it out with each other, while we sit back and wait to pick off the winner with the help of NATO. If anything, the United States should be thanking you wholeheartedly. You made up enough chaos for us to essentially take over the whole planet officially. Now, what can I do for you all anyhow? I doubt there is too much you could want to ask. You've been in orbit for a month now. I'm quite sure that you can learn anything you want from our networks at this point. Ah, oh, yes, we could, but we have a bit of an unspoken rule at this point. This is the 35 planet that we've made contact with and gone to uplift now. Over time, we learned that the questions that we need to ask cannot be answered by examining data networks, no matter how top secret. And honestly, one or two species tried to counter-hack us. It is annoying. So now we isolate ourselves almost completely. We approach a planet, hijack the local media networks, and then land somewhere on the planet after requesting a meeting. Anyone who isn't a world leader is rejected and kept out of our ship. Anyway, the question. The only big one really is, uh, and I'll be honest, it'll seem odd, unnecessary even. He caught my own race and every single other one off guard completely when we found out we even needed to ask. The big question is, what is humanity's representative god? No, I'm sorry. Uh, I think I must have misheard you. Humanities? No. You did not mishear me. <sighs> Look, I know without even looking, your race has the concept of gods. You have probably had thousands of them, at least, right? I don't mean any of those, not even a little. It would be more akin to the concept, I guess. My race has the builder, a concept deep in my species' souls. We decide to build, to craft, to design, plan, and make. It is a drive that we have always had, a concept so intrinsic to our existence that we didn't even realize it ourselves. We have the phrase, even with our species, to resist the build is to resist death. Another race, the Kath, have the explorer. They have an innate drive to discover, wonder, infer, and find. Another, the Lulz, have one more akin to a concept than others, Evo. Evolution is their deity. They adapt, evolve, overcome, and move past obstacles. They don't seem to crave adaptation or evolution. It just exists to such an extent on their planet that it is their deity. It would be an ideology, drive, understanding, or concept that every human upon the planet has an understanding of at least on a fundamental level. If you really cannot think of any, then we have no other choice but then to take you off-world temporarily. In the void between worlds, sometimes stars, one will meet their god. Not any made-up mythological bullshit god that people worship that doesn't really exist, but the actual god that looks over the lot of you. So, uh, why is this important? Just humor me. Give me some time to think here. This is, um, a lot. <sighs> this is important because once your species reaches the stage, all of you will have an innate connection to this god. Through this connection, you can all ask questions, seek answers, guidance, hell, even get boons from whatever god that watches over you. On many worlds, psychics exist, people who claim to see visions through dreams, able to move things with their minds. Depending on the deity, the nature of these physics will change. My people are able to do with nothing but our minds, for example, shape and craft wood and metal. We cannot forge metals with our minds, sadly, but we can shape metal already smelted and forged. The Lulz have the ability to adapt themselves. Biomancy, I guess you'd call it. They can run and use focus and will adapt themselves to have more stamina, better endurance. 
They can make themselves jump higher, run faster, etc. Think, what can your psychics do? What is the common link? I would like for you to try and know what your deity is first. After all, one race, the trite followed a god of slaughter. He lashed out and tried to attack the Buldum who follows my race and who we follow. The other gods of other members on the ship worked together and we overcame it and put it down, thankfully. As a result, the entire species on a planet began wildly slaughtering each other, and in the end they all died. So, um, any ideas? No, uh, yeah. Uh, I have one, maybe. But really, I have no clue. I, I doubt that it'll be anything dangerous, but if it is who I think it is, then our guard is neutral at worst. I, uh, I would like to meet with them, I think. Consider it a personal favor. Fine. I suppose we can do that. But do know if your god attacks, 33 others are ready and waiting to overcome and subdue him. The president nods and the ship rumbles slightly as it takes off into the space between Earth and Mars. Once they arrived, an ethereal figure appeared before the president. It was a figure of average height, wearing a cloak darker than the void between the stars. The cloak was tied onto the figure with a loose rope belt with an hourglass attached to it. In its right hand was a scythe, the handle made of old and knotted wood. The blade was simple and half as long as the handle of the tool, but the edge of the blade looked almost wet. It was clearly sharp enough to cut at the mere gazing of it. When these aliens saw the figure, it stumbled backwards, wanting to scream in abject horror. Death. The human god was death. The literal embodiment of the end of life. The surprising part, though, was the president's reaction. The man stepped forwards upon seeing the cloaked figure, and a small tear fell from one of his eyes. He shook his head and collected himself before he looked death in the eyes and said, Hello, old friend. I'm glad that I was right, and you are the one watching over all of us. I, I, uh, may I? Death nodded his head, and with a nod, the president jumped forward and embraced the skeletal figure. And to the alien's surprise, Death let go of his scythe and hugged the man back. After being frozen for a long few minutes, the alien spoke again finally. Y you, uh, the entire human race, it, it, it's death. Y you are guarded, watched and guided by death. How can you not fear or, and even hug the embodiment of the end of everything? Hearing this, Death let out a low laugh. It sounded like wind going through an empty room but it carried a depth and low sound with it that oozed undeniable authority. Young one, you cannot fear me like that. I am not evil. I am not neutral either. I try my best to be good even. You fear me, I know, for what I represent. Who doesn't fear dying? Yet, I... <sighs> Stephen, explain to him. I need to make myself known to the rest. The president nodded and began, and death faded away again and disappeared. I, I'll summarize it for you. Death is the closest friend anyone will ever have and the kindest god that you'll ever know. Many fear him for what he represents, but he's the last friend that anyone ever has. He is always there to make sure that nobody, not a single soul, goes into whatever lies beyond alone. Nobody ever truly dies alone. Death is with us all in the end, and ensures that we are ready, and at least have one other with us when we go. If that isn't kindness, making sure that nobody dies alone and scared, then uh, what is? End of story. I'd quickly like to thank the T5 peeps, but Mori, Terran on Air, Cold War, Boom of Offen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, Lord Azrakul, and Arcadian. Thank you.